Okay, today we're going to groom a heavy coated Wheaton uh, in a show trim. Now the way I groom, um, it may be different and differ to other people's, it's just my way. You'll find your own way of, of doing it, so um, this is just a guide and I hope that this will help you. So when we groom a Wheaton, um, especially for a show, we've got to think about what is under the coat. What is the bone structure of a Wheaton and the shape of it? So we, I tend to use both of these um, diagrams and think about what's underneath the coat. This is the American one and this is the UK one. Uh, and as you can see, they differ slightly. Um, that tends to have a, a slightly longer back and the tail set is not quite as high. Um, I, I guess that it's somewhere in between which is what we want so think about what shape is your wheat and what shape ideally do we want to wheat in. and with all the hair on a wheat in, you can if you like hide some obvious things like a low tail set or something like that just by um, doing your trimming you know slightly different for example um, I tend to split the dog into um, three to four parts. You've got your body part here, um, this is the back end and this is the front end and anything to do with the neck and the shoulders I do from behind the ear right down to this part here. So I'll show it you um, when we actually start trimming the dog but I want you to think about that is the dog with the hair and this is the dog without the hair and these are ideal angles for shoulders and angles for the rear end as well and the bender stifle and the hock being straight up so we're going to also think about where a tail set is for example anything here if this bone is lower the tail set also tends to be um, lower so you can actually trim uh, and bring it higher before you actually curve it in to, to adjust the tail set. So um, we'll make a start shortly and um, we'll look at it but think about your dog, think about what do you need to do if you leave too much hair um, on the skirt you're going to make the dog look short on leg um, and it's all about balance. Whatever you do on the front, you've got to do on the rear and you've got to do in the middle. It's no good taking a lot off the front and leaving big hairy legs wafting about. Nobody can see the movement that way. You want the coat to flow so it flows beautifully um, this way and you don't want it flapping about that way. Um, you can make a dog look out at the elbow at the front if it's got too much hair on the, sh on the shoulder part uh, and behind the, the um, elbow and you can just spoil the whole look when it's moving just by having um, too much hair and it's important to take off an equal amount of hair um, you know all the way around and I tend to keep going round and round the dog till I've got the part you want. Um, we'll make a start and um, go from there. Okay, then. Okay, this is Cheer, and we're going to start with her. And I talk about splitting the dog into three. So I do the body first. Where you start behind the shoulders affects how much you've got on your neck and your shoulder down here. So start beyond the shoulder, start about there and always stop about an inch before the tail set so you've got hair to work with then, um, you know, and make sure you're very careful here because if a dog's got low tail set you can lift it up and if the dog's got a good tail set if you took too much off you'd make it look even worse. So we're going to start with this section and I start at the back. I use straight scissors um, and uh, my sprats comb to flick up the hair. So I'm starting way beyond the shoulder and trim around, flick it up, trim around, you're going to keep the hair all the same length. This will help it lay flat and it will help it move right when it's in the ring. 
keep going round the dog until you get to what you want um, but so don't spend all your time in one place if you're unsure it's best to keep going round it so that you don't um, make a mistake in one place so I'll go over that again and I'm rounding the shape the body shape the dog which is round remember if it's there you can always take more off you can't put it back on if you cut too too much to start with and I've stopped about an inch before a tail set there stand good girl so now I'm going to do the side and it blends in to the top part of the dog I'm getting the basic shape on this first trim around and then um, we'll do all the shaping um, of the body and the neatening up you can see all the dead hair there all the wispy bits that's what wants to come off now down the leg you need to again you're still flicking it up but round the bottom we're going to round the bottom and the bone there is what you use as a little guide really um, in, in helping with it so go up the back slightly curve it round and this is again the leg hair has got to be all one don't um, don't do it in the steps otherwise you'll have pantaloons stand <coughs> already the coat's lying flatter I mean we're going to take more off but it's already lying flat continue um, around the body both sides doing the same principle of flicking the hair up shaping it to the roundness of the body and combing it down until you've got to a point where you know the body hair is laying flat and the coat still looking as one coat I will tidy it up um, a little bit and finish it later but I've got a basic um, shape there now so what we're going to look at now is blending in the back end uh, using thinning shears and getting the tail do the back end and blending behind um, behind the bender stifle which is here to give a nice shape to the bottom and there's a bone here um, it's it's called the rump or the ischium and you what I do is I put my thumb on that bone and um, protect the dog and yeah. from there I use the thinning shears and blend in as far as the hock you only go as far as the hock don't take the hock hair away um, because that really does take a long time to grow if you if you cut that off so put your hand and your thumb there now if your dog's got a low tail set you can actually start it higher up but her tail set is correct and the bone is in the right place so we just blend in keep your scissors moving and as you'll see from the side it's already now getting a nice shape giving that lovely shape here and this also if you leave too much hair on and you've got a dog that's a bit too long if you didn't take it off the front and the back you're just making your dog look longer so you're squaring up the dog by doing this and the same the other side hand on the bone 
blend it in down as far as the hock. Keep combing it out. Stand. Good girl. So we're getting a nice shape there. So we lift up the tail and I use smaller thinners, uh, smaller straight for some of this and sometimes I use the thinners depending. So I just want to get that shape there. So what I'm going to do is flick the hair up like this and blend it into the side again as far as the bone and blend this in. We'll tidy and blend in all that we're just getting the basic shape at the moment and we'll blend in all the hair to the side of it. Again, don't leave a great big lump of hair here. All it does when you move is just waffle around itself and it, it just makes it's not neat, it's not tidy. So when you do the tail, comb it out. tidy up around the bottom, go up the side, again I'm using small straights for this but you know you can no. neaten it off if you want with your thinners. Sure. So neaten this up here and a little that way till we get in a basic shape. The other side and now we're on this side so I'm just blending in this rear end so and um, blending in along here and around and I'm just going to use my straight scissors just to finish this side off and as you can see now she's got a nice shape and it's already uh, shortened a body if you look at a body overall from when we started because we've took uh, we've just tidied this up really uh, and took excess off so I'm just going to slightly go down there and blend all this in now again slightly rounded to the shape of the body so that it all lies flat and how far and how short and how neat or tidy or how far you want to go is entirely your choice but that's the basic principle of, of how I do it now with the skirt you can make a dog look um, too, if you leave it too long you can make a dog look short in leg especially if you have a small dog or again you can make a dog look too tall in leg so you've got to be very careful so what you actually are doing is y you're doing a little shape which it's shorter here and it gets longer towards the back of the elbow of this leg so we go down it slightly curving it round and this will blend in too. So I'll just pop this side and um, again it's all about how balanced the dog looks when it's it's finished. Always step back and have a look um, about it. I will probably tweak that again once I've finished um, the front end but I just want to get the basic shape there um, and again we've shortened this half up now and we've got all this to do and when this goes it again it will bring the dog in uh, and we, we're leaving all this here the reason I've left it is because it's there to blend in 
um, when we've finished. If you took all that, you wouldn't have it to do at the end, and we'll finish the top line uh, and even maybe take some off the sides as well. Um, don't forget to do your feet. So I'm going to do the back foot. Um, I put my hand down and, and lift it. So what we've got to do is keep the scissor flat and you really must keep the hair flat against the pad because if you don't the dog will walk on all that hair and it, it can actually look wrong. So stand them up then when you've done that and using your scissors at a slight angle move all the way around the foot using your scissors really to um, flatten it down and just get your shape. It goes up slightly here um, just there like that because when the dog is moving and it kicks back the judge can see the flat pad uh, and he can see it is not like a shire horse foot and they should have a nice neat tight foot sides now and we're going to concentrate on a front end now as you can see by doing the back end we've actually brought her in and and she's shorter now but by the time we finished the front and blended that in again um, a shape will have come in slightly so um, what we're going to do is the front I start behind the ear and it's going to go all the way down as far as there and by blending that in you'll get your nice length of neck which is why we've left all this hair here and we'll finish all this off and the top line and blending it in um, towards the end once we've got all this sorted out so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to um, do the front the dog can sit if it wants for this um, it's up to the dog really and I'm going to use my thinning shears and I start behind the ear and I keep the scissors moving going all the way down keep combing it through because it's amazing how much you take out and we blend it down onto those front legs and I'm using the ear as a marker um, all the time keep it out of the way so you don't um, catch it so just keep blending it in combing it out and then when we do the front I'm going to take a bit off the front now um, so that again I've always leave enough so I've got it all to blend in so from behind the ear um, to the breastbone here you can clear all this um, away but you want to leave enough here again leave enough to blend in and I'm only going as far as the breastbone and this will bring in the front I will tidy this up as well with with straight scissors um, probably at the end but I'm just taking it down and blending it in and as you can probably see the front starting to take that shape because it comes down from that ear and it should go straight down the front to the front of a toe straight down from the back of the ear is the shape you're looking for same this side You can see the coat maturing as it comes down the neck. Um, it's actually now maturing, the waves are coming more uh, and that will work its way down the body as the dog matures. Colour as well. We 
remember you're keeping it down as far as there and the neck all lengthen but you're keeping the coat as one no steps to show you here you see all this here um, I want to still leave that a little bit but anything up under here we can clear away uh, and make sure your scissors are moving all the time. I've took her out the um, the noose just to to demonstrate this. Down. Good girl. So as you can see, it's slowly showing the the neck and shoulders are slowly beginning to reveal themselves. And we're going to just take a little bit and um, make sure it's not too much there. Again, just watch down here because if you've too much, um, it, again, it makes the dog as it looks forward, it'll make it look short in legs. So again, just be careful around here. Make sure you can see enough leg. We've still got to tidy that up, but you don't want it hanging down to there. Otherwise, it, it just doesn't look balanced at all and we'll just do the same here again I'm going from the top of the head and um, the ear I'm using the ear just all this is is for behind the neck and as you can see I'm going just beyond the shoulder because that will all help to bring it in and keep combing it out Okay, I'm just going to have done some of the thinning out now, so I'm using my straight scissors and um, going up or down, depending which side you're on. Um, but be careful the dog doesn't come down on the scissor. What I usually do is I hold it up if I go up, but really, um, if you can manage coming down, that's better. So what I'm just doing now is I've took a lot off. I'm blending it in to bring a front in. And take that up there to, to blend that in and blend this in down just you don't really take much off the front legs to be fair um, and really all we're doing is is getting that straight so that it's flat um, when we're finished I've still got some slight blending in down here so just keep doing it so we've took the majority and blended that in so we now just, it's still all part of the neck and shoulder part that we're doing. I mean this is still a juvenile coat so um, there's still some change to go in it. Um, quite a bit in fact, it's still got some maturity to do but it's coming along um, quite nicely. She's not quite two yet so still some changes to occur okay we're going to do the head I use the ears as a, a measure really of, of the shape so the ear folds naturally there against the head and but we're going to move them out the way um, just for safety's sake so what we're going to do is it's a 45 degree handle down there and we're going to clear this away again I'm using thinning scissors and um, just 
taking off the cheeks um, which look fat and, and make the head look too round really because that's not the shape of a Wheaton head. Um, a Wheaton head and quite a few of the terrier heads, not all of them, look like a, a brick shape. So keep your scissors moving, your thinning shears, all the way down like that and you want it to try and all blend in forward. Keep putting the ear back, having a look and we'll do the same for this side now. Put the ear back and um, do the just keep trimming it off and, and combing it out because um, more comes off than you think. moving everything towards the nose at that angle and I've combed all the hair towards the nose just clear a little here behind this ear keep checking how it's looking and then the front you see now it's it's much flatter there she ain't got bulging cheeks and here um, it, it varies how people like to have the head um, and this bit here I blend into the back of the neck as part of it and again I'm using the thinners and I'm just coming forward not taking a lot out just a little just to get the show as you can see we can't actually see she's got any eyes at all at the minute um, so we've we sort of going to take it away from the sides and that way it reveals the eye without cutting a, a shape out which um, makes the the head look wrong I mean, some people like to take all this away um, and that's up to you know what each person wants um, and um, some people like more on the head um, in this country so um, really the choice is yours how far or where you want to to start the fall coming forward or whether you want to fall one along keep combing it otherwise you won't get the shape clear away under the neck slightly so that everything's coming forward um, but you're keeping your beard you can slowly see the head shape coming now the brick shape to the head as you look over it Put your hand on the ear when you're working near the ear. Hold it flat. She's got a little kiss girl here on the top of her head, so I've got to blend it in to sort of make that lay lay flat really. Let's 
slowly we actually revealing her, her eye a little there. We don't want we don't reveal it um, too much. Um, usually when you've finished you've got to be careful because there's more gone off than you, you actually imagine. Okay, we're just going to tidy up the beard. Um, so um, just bring it forward uh, and take off any little uh, bits. I've just got small straight uh, pair of scissors there. Some people do um, where they do this and they turn that round and they, they trim it like that. There's all different ways. Um, it, it doesn't matter whichever way you get and achieve what what you want so we're more or less there now just a few little tweaks So there we are, finished.